Welcome to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. This state has a lot to offer, and music is one of its greatest exports. On this podcast, we get to know songwriters through their stories and hear some of their music. Today, we're at Arlen Studios, and my guest is Jennifer Jackson. I'm Carl Anderson, and this is the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. It's in her DNA. As a kid growing up in New Jersey, Jennifer Jackson had a father who instilled in her a love of music. Sometimes it's hard to tell what century her music comes from. She gives her songs a treatment that respects bygone eras while adding her own modern edge. She's lived in urban and cultural centers all over the world before eventually finding her way to Austin, Texas. She's no stranger to the physical tolls that a musician's life can have on the body, though. The repetitive motion of holding and playing guitar led to severed tendons in both shoulders and they remained that way for years before connecting with the Musician Treatment Foundation and receiving a long overdue procedure from Dr. Alton Barron. It's really great to see her playing again and it's even greater to have her here with us. Jennifer Jackson, welcome to the show. Thank you, Carl. Thanks for coming. (laughs) Glad to be here. What song are you going to play for us? Well, Carl, um, uh, after that intro, I want to do a, a little song I wrote about my childhood or about childhood in general. And it's a tune called River Road. Great. That's the road I was born on. I was just little when I lived there, but anyhow. All right.
<laughs> the sound of one <laughs> hand clapping. <laughs> Two. Well, yeah, not one. Uh, yeah. Two hands. That was always one of my favorite sayings. So thanks for your help. It's like one hand clapping. <laughs> it's such an East Coast thing, right? <laughs> thanks for coming out, Jennifer. That was my you. You really did grow up on River Road, didn't you? Well, I or, was born there. We were... we moved soon after that, okay. but I did grow up there for my first year of my life. Right. So born on River Road mm -hmm. and just informs your whole life. <laughs> well, you know, childhood does that. That's... I don't know if the road did it, but <laughs> I think the childhood does it. Right. So what was it like? You started on River Road and... And what was it like being a, a young gal on uh, on the East Coast in Jersey, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what was childhood like, and, and how did music come into it? Um, as far back as I can remember, our household was very musical. I don't remember a specific incident, but um, my dad is a real natural musician mm -hmm. and always played guitar and sang, and, um, and I... I just was lucky to be born with a gift probably from his DNA where I can just harmonize on anybody's singing. So I would harmonize with him and we'd work up songs. And then a lot of his friends were also musical. Mm -hmm. And my folks were very young when I was born. Okay. Um, you know. And it's, it's the so, 70s, right? Yeah. So it 70s was. 70s is um, a wild time. I guess they say so. <laughs> I was a little kid in the seventies too. I remember it being a wild. We were time. wild children, we but were. Um, but the folks were always, you know, having parties and playing music, and yeah. so I just remember a lot of um, making music with adults, really. Okay. Um, my my folks' friends. Right. So they would come on in here, and so it wasn't like the kid because. It seems like we got kicked out. It's like, you kids go outside and play while we do stuff. Yeah, well, I would get kicked back up to bed because usually it was at night. Okay. I'd get kicked back up to bed, but sometimes I would come back down and sing a little. And they probably encouraged you. <laughs> they, uh, Yeah, I think it went both ways. Yeah, I got some encouraging. And then just... Um, Friends of family and, and kids my own age that were musical, we would but you were play in the chorus, together. The chorus, and uh, did you have a church choir, maybe? No, we didn't go to church. Okay. Um, I wasn't really in a choir. We just sang for fun, you know, yeah. get, going over to each other's houses and playing. And um, the re Did you have a little transistor radio? I did have an olive green transistor radio. I love my transistor radio. <laughs> that, that's the first radio I ever had. Yeah, I think that was my first one. My grandfather bought me that. It's and then and then I remember getting this like little Lafayette cassette player, like that was a single thing, and you and it had a microphone built into it, you know, and like then you would record from the transistor onto the uh, onto to the your cassette. cassette was like being a DJ, you know, like the instincts to do that were there from the start. Yeah. A little later in my life, I did the same thing because I had a boom box that you could also mm -hmm. record onto. And that's how I would record my new songs to show my band. Right. And, you know. Right. Exactly. Mm. When did when did you start writing songs? I guess when I was in my late teens. Okay. And um, I remember I wrote some songs because my mom was kind of urging me to go to college after high school. And um, I just, at this point, our family lived in Massachusetts. Okay. And so... You guys moved I, to Massachusetts when you were 12. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm What part again? We lived in Holden, Massachusetts. Holden. It's Worcester County. Yeah, it's yeah. central Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I right. think we played them in... Uh, in my boarding school days, I think we played Holden. In what <laughs> yeah. sport? In baseball. Oh. Yeah. That's funny. Holden. <laughs> well, Holden High School was called Wachusett Regional High School. Uh-huh. Because it was um, a lot of small towns, so it was five different towns that went to one high school. Okay. Um, so if it was high school, it might have been Wachusett. And then junior high school was Holden Junior High, so maybe it was junior high. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But anyhow, um, what was I saying? We were talking about uh, when did we start writing music? Oh yeah. So in order to go to apply to one of the colleges I applied to, um, I wanted to study and do music. So I wrote some songs just to try to get into this college. Huh. Um, 
And then how did I, that? But how did so? How did that work? Because just okay, I'm gonna write a song. <clears throat> Um, oh gosh, the same way it happens any, any time now, even just kind of thinking about something you want to write about or having some phrases or th ideas in your mind. And then, um, maybe trying to find some chords you like and putting it together mm -hmm. and trying to shape it. And I think it probably went the same way back then. Wow. So the, the very way it came to you is just was the way it wanted to be, I guess. Yeah, um, I don't really have a real method even now. I just, um, I thought about today playing a brand new one, which I'm not going to do because I don't have it where I want it yet. Uh -huh. But it's one of those, um, one of those that really came to me like at three in the morning when I was half asleep and half dreaming and it came into my brain and I had the willpower to get up and jot some hard. stuff down. Yeah. yeah, I usually don't. But um, I, yeah, you lose gold when you don't. But I sometimes. No, I, but that's sorry to interrupt because it's. But I think that's important too because I've had that as right where you get stuff out of your dreams. Yeah. And if you don't get, make yourself get up and put it down, you can lose it. it. But it can fly. It sounds like this one. It sounds like you didn't lose this one. I didn't lose this one this week. Um, but yeah, I I write in all sorts of different ways. Um, I don't have a real method. Mm -hmm. But um, inspiration, inspiration or just thoughts that build up um, or maybe um, some melodies right. that that just stick with me that I want to go further with. Mm -hmm. And so you wrote you wrote these songs and you did you get into the college? I did. All right. I didn't go there, but I did get in. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you go? Um, I opted. I, the, the college was called Hampshire College. Mm -hmm. Um, and I opted for UMass just because, um, I don't know, I guess it was easier to do. It was, and, and its nickname was ZooMass, so yeah, that was, was going to be fun. It had more animals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So you went to ZooMass. I did. And what did you pursue there? Um, I went in and I hoped to study music, but I, I wasn't accepted um, because I didn't read music. Okay. And I, I didn't realize that UMass also had a jazz department. It was called uh, Afro-American Jazz. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned for, you mentioned choruses, like a little bit into the semester, I auditioned for a gospel choir Mm -hmm. And the conductor was also the head of the Afro-American and jazz department. Okay. And he said, are you in my department? And I said, <laughs> no, I didn't know you had one. And he said, well, you need to be. So he switched everything over for me from liberal arts into his um, section of the music department. Oh, great. So I did that for a couple of years. Then, um, how important to have somebody like that? At that oh, he was moment. a wonderful mentor. I learned so much from Dr. Dr. Horace Boyer. Dr. Horace Boyer, Horace Boyer. shout out. He's in the in the other world now. Shout out. Um, <laughs> but he was a huge um, musical mentor to me. Hmm. I didn't know a lot about jazz and. Um, so he introduced me to all sorts of jazz. And then um, just he was one of those teachers where we would just get together and really talk about life mm -hmm. more than music. Uh -huh. uh, and lis listen to music, but talk about life. Right. And he gave me a lot of opportunities to get up and perform um, in all kinds of settings that probably I never would have. Right. Yeah, it, it, to have to have mentors is, a, is an obvious necessity for for an artist. Yeah, I felt pretty lucky to have my path crossed w cross with his path. Right. Um, he was a real heavy, heavy academic and heavy musician. Uh huh. He it's a good um, combo. Yeah, he. I like he, the academic side of things. Yeah, but he came from the gospel tradition, and when he grew up in the South, he and his brother had a, a gospel group called the Incredible Boyer Brothers. Yeah. And he's got one of those voices that 
I just hear a note out of his mouth and I get goosebumps. He has a voice that just has that quality to sure. it. Sure, sure. So you got that from college. You Did you graduate? I did eventually, um, but not in music. I, I graduated in Italian. Cause okay, yeah, that's right. He ended up doing a sabbatical and curating at the Smithsonian Museum wow. for their um, jazz department of that. But um, I went to Italy for a year abroad, and then, then I came back and graduated in Italian. Right. So you really took to the language. I did, yeah. And you're fluent in it now and give lessons, right? I do. That's, yeah, <laughs> we got a chance to go to your house and actually film you doing it. Yeah. And uh, you're such a quaint. I, I think your style is awesome. Uh, your, your home was lovely, and it reminded me of, like, being in France, uh, even though you were, like, up in a tree, you know, but it was like... <laughs> Just the whole thing felt like just like very, very artistic and inspired. And uh, oh, I, thank you. I'll, I'm sure that uh, it's conducive towards your work. Yeah, I, I feel very comfortable where I live. And that definitely um, lets the music flow. And it's it's kind of secluded, as you saw. So right. it's we rehearse there. It's no problem. And right. Yeah. No neighbors complaining. Mm -mm. I've done actually a lot of recording there, too. How old were you when you first recorded? Actually, during college, I was in a band that recorded not my songs and then uh -huh. started recording my songs out of college and um, and put together what would be my first release. It was a um, it was an album called Slowly Bright. <laughs> 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 that I started in Boston and finished when I moved to New York. And uh, I made this album with my bandmates from Boston and then some musicians that I had met upon moving to New York. Mm -hmm. um, and it was produced by a good friend of mine named Paul Bryan. Okay. Um, I worked on it kind of on and off for a couple of years while I was touring with a musician named Jules Shear. Okay. And so my work with Jules kind of funded me being able to chip away and finish up slowly bright. Oh, good. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, there's a, you <clears throat> have to, <laughs> that's a sophisticated, uh, to, to get anything done, especially if you're touring and you've got to record and it's, you know, that certainly you don't have deep top pockets when you're out there living like that. Yeah, it was, um, but it was a great time. I mean, all those first years living right. in new york city Satisfying. were really really great years i called it cutting my teeth i said i'm glad i cut my teeth in new york you yeah know? Like that was a great place to cut my teeth artistically i agree there was um a lot to be inspired by there a lot of people yeah. and and things to be inspired by books everywhere mm -hmm. book book on the ground mm -hmm. people were selling you know and and it was all stuff you wanted i wanted to read and it was just like <laughs> and yeah. then writing and writing and just inspired inspired a city that doesn't stop moving ever yeah that is the truth great place to get started <laughs> um I want to ask you real quickly about uh, the little shift, but the NPR thing that you did, how did that come about? Um, if I can remember, I, um, I did another record after Slowly Bright called mm -hmm. Birds. Okay. And I made this record Birds with a guy who's become just a really dear friend now, Brad Jones. Um, and Brad Roger, is a producer, and he's got a studio in Nashville. And our publish we shared a publisher. Okay. So our publisher introduced us, <clears throat> and he said, do you want to uh, do some recording? And really, when I met him, I was finishing that first record I told you about, Slowly Bright. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing a record, but maybe maybe some other time. And then some other time happened, and he said, why don't you come down to Nashville, and we'll just do some recording and see if we like working together. Okay. So we didn't have a plan. We recorded, like, in three days that I was there, we probably recorded ten songs. Nice. So, um, and it was just really great to work with him, and he called in great players. And nice. <clears throat> then I went home, and... Um, 
Then he said, well, do you want to come back down? And this can be a whole record. Like, why don't we finish it out? So we did, and that was Birds. And there's a song on Birds, um, which I think I'm telling you the truth. Uh, <laughs> it's called um, Mercury, the Sun, and Moon. <clears throat> Look, if it's not on Birds, it was on the next record called So High. <laughs> and um, that song, Mercury, so if it was Birds, it was on a label called Parasol Records. Okay. So they did some uh, publicity and it got out there. And um, somebody from a song writing show on NPR, which kind of featured new artists, mm -hmm. heard it and featured it. Wow. Um, I think it was called All Songs Considered. All Songs Considered. Yeah. I, know, I remember that show. Yeah. yeah. So I think it might still exist. Yeah. It just got, I don't know, it was kind of random, but it got picked up and got That's featured. So cool, and so man. it got some, it got a little bit of uh, notice across the country. That's really cool. That's a, to me, that's a, that's a high-end thing getting on NPR. It is. You know, when you get something like that, uh, when I did, suddenly I heard from all these people, mm -hmm. and everybody thought that um, it's kind of, um, it validates what you do. People think, wow, it's really a big deal. And in retrospect, I see it really is a big deal. Yeah. At the time, I thought, well, that's great. But, you know, right. I didn't get that it was um, something that gives you a little bit of national visibility. That not only that, it's it's all now. It's on the resume forever. That's part. That's, true. that's the other part. Yeah, of it. That's, that's true. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and on that note, let's play another song. A song. Another song. Uh, maybe I can play that that song that I just mentioned, Mercury, the Sun and Moon. Yeah, awesome. That sounds good. Love is sweet, they say. Such a great voice. It's Thank so, you. Uh, 
just that <clears throat> kind of like in that bio it says it's very just like charming and you know <laughs> kind of old worldly and timeless and sweet all right enough of that well how did you get to austin I got here the first time with my friends in New York City, John Modeski, mm -hmm. Billy Martin, and Chris Wood. And they were just kind of like cresting up and getting famous with their band, Modeski, Martin, and Wood. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I lived with John and Chris for a while, and um, John had an RV. I think his dad got an RV for them mm -hmm. so the band could travel that way. And they were coming to Austin for South By. I was in a dressing room at a, a used clothing place in New York City. Okay. And I was trying something on, and I was with a friend, and we were chatting. And I was saying, yeah, you know, I'm, um, I'm going to drive down to Austin, Texas with my friends next week for this South by Southwest. <clears throat> and I said, I would love to try to find a place to play really last minute. And from the next dressing room, this girl said, oh, my brother owns a club in, in Austin. I can get you a show. So he <laughs> he owned a club which was called the Mercury. Oh yeah. Here in Austin. That's not and just any old club, the Mercury. It yeah. was a big deal. Yeah, Mercury. it was a really nice club. So he gave me a gig. He's never heard of me and he gave me a gig and those guys were my band. Wow. So they were awesome. Yeah. And um so we drove down and, and camped and drove and just had a blast. And I saw Austin for the first time, and I was just really taken taken with it, mm. um, really enchanted. And then um, probably, I don't know, a year or two later, I had an album come out on a, a label from Hoboken, New Jersey called Bar None Records. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was a, my record called So High. Okay. And they sent me back to to Austin for South By. Got gotcha. you. Along with a bunch of other things that I was doing to promote that record. And um, once again, I loved it. Um, I hung out here for a few days. <clears throat> I met um, a couple people that are still my friends. And then, um, so I was kind of getting my toe in, in the water. Uh -huh. And then I was in this thing in New Orleans called um LMNOP and it was Lewis yeah. Myers yes. South by that he did one year LMNOP, there. LMNOP, yeah. So I was in it and there in this thing I was in a panel about songwriting and I met um two guys, Troy Campbell and John Sanchez. And the three of us just became best friends. Love Joy <laughs> Troy Campbell and John Sanchez. <laughs> so we became best friends. And then we all got invited to go to Denmark that summer to go to this island in the North Sea to write songs with Danish people. Right. It was called Song Island. That's awesome. And um, that was just like the best. It was two weeks on this crazy in a crazy hotel. With um, it was how nuts. many? How many? How many uh, writers were there? There were probably thirty. 30 to 40 people there, um, mostly and, Scandinavian, but some mm -hmm. from the UK, a few of us from the United States, and we wrote songs, and we had a band, and then they did all these shows afterwards, and uh -huh. we went all around the island and to Copenhagen and Aarhus and all around Denmark and <clears throat> did that, and then I was like, I love these guys, and yeah. I'm tired of New York, and <laughs> my building was literally collapsing, the back of the building the year I moved out, wow. caved in. That's how bad it was. <laughs> well, so that's I New just... York for you. <laughs> <laughs> Got to pay your dues. So, but then I just came down. I stayed with Troy for a while and um, hung out with John for a while, and I loved it. And then I just moved. <clears throat> and you've been here pretty much since with that probably little stints, you know, traveling here and there. Yeah, but. I did actually move back to New York after two years. Huh. Um, but then I moved back a year later to my same apartment. Oh, yeah, the that's right. The one you right. saw. That's right. Yeah, so I just, I wasn't quite sure, and I think I was missing New York. But then I realized, uh, I want to really give Austin a better try. 
So I did come back. Well, we're glad you did. And I think uh, I, I wanted to also give a shout out to to, to, <clears throat> to Greg and uh, Sarah at the New World Deli that where you play in that. Absolutely. Uh, I used to live in that neighborhood years ago. And those guys were always so great and supportive of the music community. Yeah, they're wonderful. And I met Greg and Sarah through Troy Campbell uh -huh. because I had just moved here and um I think Troy, someone gave him a PA system that he wasn't using, and he gave it to Greg. Oh, cool. And that was their oh, PA wow. for years That's, there. Troy is such a great <clears throat> connector, and you know what I mean? Like, I'll you, tell can, you, you what, can hear his name underneath a lot yeah. of different stories. It's true. He is a, he's a real idea person, Yeah, and he puts people together. He sure does. He's got a real knack for that. He does, and he puts really cool people together. Like, he's really <laughs> good at it. I do, and I want to talk now. I want to shift it to something that's a little more serious. That you, uh, that what you went through with your shoulders, and uh, and and how that all came about, and how that it's also been repaired. Yeah, I just had some really bad injuries, um, just wear and tear. And not getting it taken care of and all that. And the shoulders. The shoulders, yeah. Both shoulders. And then um, I was trying to get some help because it got to the point where I, it was it was not letting me do what I need to do in my life right. anymore. And I couldn't really get anywhere with that. Um, I had some suggestions from HAM, mm -hmm. uh, health Alliance for Austin Musicians, yeah. um, but nothing was really coming together, and then uh, and I was getting desperate because it was very 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 painful. And you probably couldn't <clears throat> really sleep even. Right? No, no, I couldn't really do much of wow. anything. Yeah, it, it was bad. That's, yeah, that's. No and way then to um, at the very eleventh hour, when I was just ready to, I don't know what, um, <laughs> Rainy Collins, the director of Ham put me in touch with a surgeon who was starting up a foundation for musicians who couldn't afford surgery, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this surgeon uh, took me on as his first patient for the foundation. Not his first patient right. that he operated Ever. on, <laughs> but the first patient for the foundation. <laughs> his name is Dr. Alton Barron. Mm -hmm. I owe a great deal to him, and his foundation is called the Musician Treatment Foundation. That's right. And um, it's been over three years now since my first surgery, and my understanding is he has really expanded it. Mm -hmm. um, I think his his goal, if he hasn't done it already, is to take it nationwide. Right. And it's just um, hand arm and shoulder surgeries for musicians wow and that's kind of his passion and um he, yeah he got me back to the point where i can play guitar again and and live my life again thank <clears throat> so. you doctor for all that and for <clears throat> con your continued support we got to meet him uh, the other day he's a remarkable man uh, yeah he's an amazing person he makes it all sound and look really easy but mm -hmm. he's he's the real deal well, that's how the pros do it. Just, is that, is just, that what they that, do? That's, I was going to say, <laughs> just like yourself, Jennifer. That's, you make it look so easy, oh, but I know, God, I know it ain't. Shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can roll us out with one more song. You know, I gave it a little bit of thought, and um, I have a new song that I have finished. Okay. That I feel um, I'm happy with it, and I want to play it because I've never recorded it. Okay. Well, the setting is the desert, because mm -hmm. I, I got to go out into the desert for a while. and uh, The Texas desert? The Mojave Desert okay. in California. Okay. This song just really came to me. It was one of those ones that just flowed into my brain really easily. And, and nothing, you didn't even have to do anything. To I didn't it. have to do much work at that. all. I, I just did a little, like massaging mm -hmm. and it Real really shoots. just it just came into my head great okay
the shadows cast a blanket that covers the valley below dusky chipmunk and a friendly road runner stop to wish me Beautiful. Thank you, Carl. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for being here and for sharing your lovely songs and stories with us. It's been my pleasure. If you've been watching this on the CW and you want to see an extended version of it, go over to the Songwriters Across Texas YouTube channel and check it out. We've got some other shows. And then there's also Jennifer with one N, by the way, Jackson. Uh, you must have a website. It's Jennifer Jackson. With one N. <laughs> Jackson.com. Go check it out. Mm. Have a good one. Thanks.